What you guys gonna have a video here for you in this one we're gonna be taking a look at how we can set up our own FTP server in Windows 10. Now I've done uh, FTP servers before using software but in this one we're gonna be taking a look at how we can set this up inside Windows 10 uh, so we can share files and folders with uh, friends and family. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So first off what we want to do is open up command prompt. I'm gonna right click here and uh, click on command prompt admin. I'm going to say yes to the user account control. Now once we've got this open, we need to type in here ipconfig and then push enter. And this is going to give us some IP addresses here. So we can see the Ethernet adapter, that's the one we want. Uh, and you want to look for uh, the actual IP here, okay? Now you may have a uh, different setup to mine, but this is the one you want, okay? So I'm going to write this down. And we also want the default gateway as well. I'm going to write these both down. Now once you've got those you can close that off the next thing we need to do is go to our control panel so i'm going to right click on the start button and go control panel now if you're looking at the category view here you can just come up to where it says view by category and choose large or small icons from here we need to go to programs and features we need to go up to where it says turn windows features on or off click on this and then from there, we need to look for internet information services. Pull that little plus sign down, and then we're gonna put a little dot inside there. Now you've noticed that we've got two areas that have uh, been highlighted here as well. World Wide Web Services, Web Management Tools, they are essential that they have uh, got the black squares in them. Next, we need to pull down the FTP server and then put a dot in there, and then a tick inside FTP here, you can see. So this is what it should look like. We've got to have all these areas covered here. Click OK, and this will start to install those features for us. Okay, it's asking us to restart. So I'm just gonna quickly restart the system. Uh, from there, what we need to do is go back to control panel, which is here, and then we're gonna click on the administrative tools. So open up that. And then what we can do here is we're going to come down to where it says Internet Information Services. Double click on this. And this will open up our Internet Information Services, the IIS Manager. So now we need to come up to the top left and pull this area down where it says Sites. And you'll see that there's a, a default website here. We can create a new one. Click on the Sites folder, right click and then add a FTP site. Okay. Now from here, we need to put in a name and what our FTP site is gonna be called. We're gonna call ours, uh, let's call it um, FTP, I'm gonna call this share. And at the path, we just have to choose a path to go to. Now I've already got a drive here inside backup and I'm gonna call this FTP share right here. There's a folder inside there, that'll do me. Go next. Now inside here, we've got the IP address and the port. Use the drop down arrow and then you want to select your IP. So we're gonna choose the IP which we had written down earlier on. And uh, next thing we wanna do is, as you can see here, this is requiring an SSL now you really want to get an SSL sorted out and the reason for that is because it's going to give you a secure connection, okay? So we're just going to say no here just for this video because it's going to be easier and quicker to set up. But if you're going to leave this long term and it's going to be open uh, to the public, then you definitely want to sort this out. Okay, so I'm going to have no SSL for this video, but go next. And the next thing we want to do is go basic, put a tick in basic. And you can see here, allow access to, do the drop down menu here and we want to go uh, specified users. Inside here, we need to put in the user that we want to specify uh, to have FTP access. Now, if we check the user account details, you'll see what that user account was when you set it up. So click on user accounts and you'll see it's Brightek. 
that's me so yours will be whatever it is and that will be the default one that you want to set up for yourself now inside here we can do read or write permissions for ourselves. now if you've got a friend or something like that and you just want to give them the read access you can give them read access here if you want to allow them to add files to that you can give them the write access so I'm going to click finish here and it should see it listed right here on the left hand side and you can see uh, the IP here okay so inside the FTP uh, area that you've created you'll have a load of little tools here that you can use uh, for setting up stuff FTP messaging login uh, FTP SSL settings and stuff like that so this is where you can set up all this uh, good information here so you can see FTP uh, current sessions this is what's running at the time when you've uh, got files uh, downloading and uploading uh, the firewall settings here and also you'll have a load of uh, authorization and stuff like that here as well and this will be here and you can see it's going to allow me to read and write permissions on here so this is where you can set it all up okay now if you did have someone else on the same uh, computer you can set them up an account and put them in here okay so now what we need to do is we need to set up our firewall settings so I'm just going to quickly do this now so we need to go to our Windows firewall we're going to go back to control panel here and we're going to go down to our Windows firewall and set that up now if you're using a Windows firewall you can see I'm not using a Windows firewall here uh, but you will need to set that up and I'll quickly show you how to do that um, so you would have to go to allow an app or feature through Windows firewall and then you change settings and then you would look for FTP FTP server and you can see there's no ticks inside here so you'd put a little tick inside here and a tick in here and here okay and then apply that and that will allow that to run through the system in my case I have got zone alarm now I'm using uh, the zone alarm software and uh, it will be the same for any other type of uh, firewall software that you use you need to go into here and allow it to go through and you can see we're using the IIS manager and again its trusted level would be here and you can uh, add at a trusted level for this and also outbound trusted outbound internet and inbound so if you're sending files in and out of that computer uh, and you're using this feature you will need to make sure that you enable this area here so you'd need to allow those areas as you can see allow allow and then you come along here it's trusted level and you can just give it a trusted or you can give it a super trusted it's entirely up to you but that's how you would get that done so that makes sure that that program will be allowed to go through the internet we're going to click OK here and we're going to close this off okay so next up what we're going to do is go to our location where we've got our folder where we're sharing and you can see I'm going to right click on this and go properties inside here we're going to go security then edit then add and then we can do the name check name you can see that's now found that click OK and then we can allow full control for that folder there okay and you can do this for other people and other permissions for that folder so I'm just going to click OK here and OK again so now we've got permissions for that area there okay so next up we're going to go to our control panel just to make sure that we've got a password on this account so you need to make sure that you've got a password for your accounts so we're going to go user accounts and uh, inside here you need to make sure that uh, this account 
has got a password and you can see it's not got a password on here okay so we're going to make changes to this account as you can see here there is no password on here we need to make sure that we've got one so sign in options I'm going to add a password Going to retype that password. And finish. Now if you're adding other people on, you'll need to go to accounts, family and other people, and add in someone else okay and here you would add in that person that you want to allow to share you can say I don't have this person's signing information and then you can put in some details here I would definitely uh, do it without a Microsoft account and then set this up here okay username password and that's it and you can set up another person now we've got that done, we can now try to log into our account. So let's just log in here. I need to put in my, my username and password. Log in. And there you go. Now you can't see no information in there because we don't have none. So let me just quickly do that. So we're just going to put something inside here. Let's just put a text document in here. I'm going to call this test. And that will be that. And go back. And then refresh. And there you go. Now that's on the LAN. So that's not outside. So if you was outside your network, say you was in another, you know, another place, another country, you won't be able to uh, access this until you make changes to your router. So we're going to do that next. So now you need to make changes to your router. Uh, so you need to log in, whatever your IP is. You log into your router's menu, and then you can then sign in here. Like so, sign in. Now this is uh, Virgin Media, so yours may be different. But all you need to do is go to advanced settings. Inside here we want to go down to where it says security and look for port forwarding. Inside here you're looking for service and, and you may be able to have FTP. If you don't you can set up your own um, your own one manually so it doesn't really matter. So if it's not listed here like you can see here, it's already set up here. We want TCP and UDP here, not just one. And also, uh, we want to make sure that we set this up right. So I'm going to put a two inside here for our IP. Add this rule in. And you can see that's now been added in. And now we've added the enable on there as well. We can apply this. Say yes, I'm sure. And now if we log in from an external source, we'll be able to log on to that FTP server. So let's go ahead and do that. So to connect on the WAN, you need to have your external IP address. Now to get this, you can do what's my IP in Google, and it will give your IP address up here. If not, you can click on one of these and it will give you your IP address. Write that IP address down. And then type in your IP address, FTP colon forward slash forward slash and your IP address, your external IP address. And then you can log in just here. So you need to put in your details. 
your username and password and there you see we've now got into that system and we can share that file and you can do that anywhere around the world as long as you set it up correctly and that's pretty much it that's how you can set up your own FTP server in Windows 10 I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoy these videos, guys, then hit the like button. Also, hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up to date when I upload new videos. Also, if you've got any problems with your computers or any questions or anything like that, you can head over to the forums. And if you haven't joined my Facebook fan page, then pop over there and give us a little like up over there. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Bye for now.